Hi guys, we have an interesting uh, uh, article here from uh, Wednesday, November uh, 3rd, 2004, the New York Times, the art section. Here we go. It's a wee bit of Yiddish wisdom. This is, uh, by, uh, uh, this is an article by Emily Eakin. An Irish-born Catholic is an unlikely champion of the Yiddish uh, literature, of the Yiddish language literature. Okay, here, we'll get to it right now. This is a wee bit of Yiddish wisdom by Emily Eakin. An Irish-born Catholic is an unlikely champion. The instructor for great dramas of the Yiddish stage, a lecture series that is part of the 92nd Street Wise celebration of the 350th anniversary of Jews in America, Harriet O'Brien must rank among Yiddish culture's most ardent and least likely champions. An actress, playwright, and translator, she is 29, Irish and Roman Catholic, a big-boned cherubic blonde, a guy, with a bachelor's degree in Yiddish literature, who speaks English with a hint of lilting brogue and Yiddish with disarming fluency. For an hour and a half on most Wednesdays evenings through December 1st, Ms. O'Brien can be found in a kindergarten classroom on the sixth floor of the Y, energetically expounding on the wonders of a cultural movement that spawned one Nobel Prize winner, Isaac Bashava Singer, and the smorgasbord of novelists, playwrights, actors, singers, and impresarios. But that has often been dismissed by Hebrew-speaking Jews as unsophisticated or lower class. <clears throat> One minute. Let's see. The best of Yiddish literature, quote, the best of Yiddish literature is on par with the best literature all over the world. And it, yet it still has to be defended. Ms. O'Brien gently admonished her audience last Wednesday. Her listeners numbered just a half dozen, including a frail old man in the, fra in the front row, leaning heavily on his walker, but they were wrapped. The evening's topic was, quote, classics rewritten for the Yiddish stage. This is uh, in 2004. This is an article that was from 2004, Wednesday, November 3rd, 2004. The evening's topics was classics rewritten for the Yiddish stage. Ms. O'Brien's creamy complexion turned bright pink as she conjured up a vision of the Yiddish theater in Manhattan during its feverish heyday, the 1910s and 1920s when more than a half dozen Broadway-sized houses, some with 2,000 seats, lined Second Avenue on the Lower East Side. They showed Yiddish versions of King Lear and Hamlet. She said, along with more recognizably Jewish fear, with its pungent... Let's get to that. There we go. A minute. With its pungent depictions of everyday life. By the end of her lecture, Ms. O'Brien had aroused, uh, has, had aroused as much curiosity about herself as about her material. Pronouncing her, quote, a treasure, one man in the audience wanted to know whether her expertise extended to her native literary traditions as well. In fact, Ms. O'Brien insisted over breakfast the next day at the Edison Cafe, a tattered theater district hangout known as the Polish Tea Room, Irish and Yiddish literature have more in common than one might think. Born in Galway, Ms. O'Brien, whose first name, Carried, pronounced Carried, is the old Irish word for friend. Moved to the United States as a 12-year-old when her father, a pathologist, accepted a faculty position at the Boston University School of Medicine. She discovered Yiddish literature as a junior at an all-girls Catholic high school in Hingham, Massachusetts, when she read a novel by Singer for English class. That's Isaac Bashava Singer. Intrigued, she, she searched the school library and found books by Singer's brother, Israel Joshua, and by Chaim Grad. They, rem they quote, they reminded me of Irish writers like Patrick Kavanaugh, whom my father had read to me, she said. They were, about, they were about a world of poverty and life absolutely defined by religion. They shared the same self-deprecating humor. Ms. O'Brien was hooked. As an undergraduate at Boston University, she designed her own major in Yiddish literature, taking classes in Hebrew College in Brookline, Massachusetts. 
and with the eminent Yiddishist Ruth Weiss at Harvard. She spent her junior year at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and was among the first non-Jewish students to intern at the National Yiddish Book Center, an organization in Amherst, Massachusetts, that collects and preserves Yiddish books. Her senior thesis was on Grada's memoir, My Mother's Sabbath Days, which Ms. O'Brien called one of my favorite books of all time. In the tiny Yiddish-speaking world, she said, not being Jewish can at times be, can at times be an advantage. While she has occasionally encountered suspicion, could she be a missionary working undercover? For more, far more often, she said people seem thrilled by her interest. Quote, everyone is interested in the idea of this strapping Irish girl with Yiddish coming out of her mouth. Ms. O'Brien said with a smile, quote, it gets me into a lot of parties. Acting, ambitious, acting ambitions merged with a literary passion. She moved to Manhattan in 1997, planning to become an actor. At one of her first auditions, auditions, she befriended Aaron Biel, a founder of the New York International Fringe Festival and the Toto Kanada Theater Company. Together, they saw a production of God of Vengeance by the Yiddish playwright Shalom Ash, an indictment of the religious hypocrisy set in a brothel featuring a lesbian love scene. The play was shut down on obscenity charges when it was first produced in English in Manhattan in 1922. Ms. O'Brien thought the production she saw was terrible and blamed the translation. I told Aaron, it's not the play I read. It's not the play I read. He said, okay, why don't you translate it? If you do a good translation, I'll direct it. A year later, in 1999, Ms. O'Brien appeared as a prostitute in a Todokan, another production of the play based on her translation. Staged on the go-go platform at Showworld, a former peep show near Times Square, the production, including Ms. O'Brien's vernacular translation, was well received. This was a former uh, place like that, this is, which has become a um, regular stage. She went on to translate two more plays from what she called Asha's Underworld Trilogy. Uh, one of them is called Mutka the Thief, and the other is The Dead Man. Along the way, she consulted with Yiddish-speaking mentors, among them the former Second Avenue celebrities, Seymour Rechtzeit, known as the Yiddish of Frank Sinatra, the Yiddish Frank Sinatra, and Luba Kadison, a strange and movie actress, now 97 and blind. Mr. Rechtzeit died in 2002, but Ms. O'Brien has a standing date to see Ms. Cadison every Sunday. They were among the ambitious Eastern European Jews who helped bring Yiddish drama out of wine gardens and shtetls and turn it into a secular urban art. In her lecture, Ms. O'Brien also cited Avram Goldfaden, the rabbinical school dropout who staged the first professional Yiddish theatrical production in Romania in 1876. Boris Tomaszewski, the actor who has, who has a 16-year-old cigarette factory worker, founded a Yiddish theater on East 4th Street in the building that is now home to La Mama. And Jacob Gordon, a socialist, playwright, and intellectual who helped popularize the Nebuchadnezzar archetype most famously embodied by Jerry, Jerry Lewis. Yiddish plays are teeming with sex, crime, incest, adultery, abortion, and sacrilege, Ms. O'Brien said. She read a passage in Yiddish from Gordon's Faust, Faust play, God, Man, and, and Devil, 1900, in which the devil tempts a man into abandoning his faith by presenting him with a winning lottery ticket. Quote, I want to give you a sense of what was happening here in the late 1800s and early 1900s before Eugene O'Neill, she told the group. These were plays with a social agenda, a political agenda. Even the musical, even the musicals had social content. Lately, Ms. O'Brien has delved into her own heritage for dramatic inspiration. Her play, The Sandpiper, a comedy in, uh, var in verse, partly inspired by her paternal grandmother, a traditional Irish storyteller, will be performed with Ms. O'Brien playing a role at Symphony Space December. in December. She has also written a novel... Pleasure Pig as yet unpublished. It's my portrait of the artist that is the young woman she left. To make ends meet, she writes theater reviews for the online zing off 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 dot com and poor and works part time as an